Hi, this is your host Sukhli Bhartia and welcome to TFI Demos. Today we have two guests from the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Once again, Chris Clark, Program Manager of Cloud Foundry Foundation and Ram Iyengar, Chief Evangelist of Cloud Foundry Foundation. And today we are going to do a demo. Chris, the floor is all yours. Oh, great. Thank you so much, Swapno. Uh, great to be back. Um, so we're very excited today to be demoing uh, Cloud Foundry Karifi, um, which is a new platform from the Cloud Foundry Foundation. Um, I, I thought I'd give a, some brief context into, you know, Cloud Foundry history um, uh, without getting into too much detail, just for folks that are, are less familiar. Um, so basically, uh, Cloud Foundry is an open source platform as a service. It's been around in various forms since 2013, originally from VMware, and then spun off to Pivotal and open source. And at that point, the Cloud Foundry Foundation was founded in 2015. Um, and since then, Cloud Foundry has been, you know, an industry standard uh, cloud application platform. It's seen a lot of success a lot of popularity across industries. Um, however, since Kubernetes has become the de facto uh, industry container orchestration tool, there's been a lot of demand for a Cloud Foundry-like experience, but backed by Kubernetes. And that's what Cloud Foundry Karifi is. It's an implementation of the Cloud Foundry API and CLI that's backed entirely by Kubernetes custom resource definitions. Um, so, while enterprises move their workloads to Kubernetes, their developers and platform operators can still enjoy that, that best-in-class uh, developer experience that Cloud Foundry has been known for. Um, so Karifi is quite new. It was just released earlier this summer, and, it, and it's at uh, the uh, 0.3 as of a few days ago. Um, but we, we think it has a lot of promise. Um, Karifi is a, it's a much lighter weight implementation of uh, compared to traditional Cloud Foundry architecture. Um, you can run it on your laptop or on a remote Kubernetes cluster from any of the major cloud providers. Uh, and unlike the traditional VM-based Cloud Foundry architecture, it's easily extensible. So that will allow for operators to incorporate newer cloud native technologies um, as they mature and become, become more viable. Um, so that should provide some amount of future proofing. Um, so we hope that Karifi is gonna be appealing to both current Cloud Foundry users uh, looking to begin using Kubernetes, and to Kubernetes users who may be struggling with various pain points. Uh, as of right now, the CNCF ecosystem is huge. There's literally hundreds of projects, and enterprises are, are sort of left to piece their own platform together from those, and that can involve a lot of um, planning and effort. Um, or they could pay for a managed service that could lead to vendor lock-in, definitely some costs. So Karifi offers another option, which is an out-of-the-box platform um, that gives you all the powers of Kubernetes with built-in security, logging and metrics, networking. Um, it's a complete platform. So, and it's open source and um, should uh, shield users from vendor locking. So that's what we're gonna demo today. Um, I would like to, to plug that we will be at KubeCon later this month. Uh, Cloud Foundry Foundation will be hosting Cloud Foundry Day 2022, our first in-person event since the pandemic. Um, we're extremely excited about that. Um, that'll be a hybrid event, both in-person and virtual. Um, and in addition to that, um, we'll be on the floor at KubeCon. Uh, so please visit the Cloud Foundry booth there, where we'll be highlighting Karifi, uh, as well as Paquetto Build Packs, which is a collection of uh, production-ready cloud-native build packs from the CF community. So with that, um, I think I can hand this over to Ram and, and you can introduce the demo and tell us what we're about to see here. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having us swap. So in today's demo, I'm going to quickly showcase a few steps, which will validate all of the claims that Chris made and give you as an idea of what the Kurifi project team has been up to and how far along they've come in being able to realize the Cloud Foundry promise. So if you look at the terminal here, it's using the Cloud Foundry CLI to connect to a local cluster on which I've configured some orgs and spaces, which are the way Cloud Foundry manages multi-tenancy traditionally. So we've been able to port the notion of orgs and spaces to, Cloud, to Kubernetes, just as it would be on Cloud Foundry. And that right there is like a huge win. So multi-tenancy on Kubernetes, thanks to Kurifi, is available in the project right now. So basically, 
this demo is going to showcase uh, two different aspects of Curry Fee's capabilities. So for the first half, we're going to look at how Curry Fee enables inner loop development, which has been traditionally a uh, lack in the CF ecosystem. So the ability to do is like something quick on the desktop, run through it, and then push it to production and things like that have been traditionally a little complex. But then we've been able to solve that with using Kubernetes and also applying Curry Fee to Kubernetes. And the second part of the demo is going to focus on a very similar deployment like we do in the first part, but it will be to a remote cluster that's running a Kubernetes somewhere on a GKE cluster. We will demonstrate that the experience will be homogeneous across both of these clusters, and it will be the exact same no matter what cluster you bring and what version of Kubernetes that you decide to bring. Not just that, we'll be deploying apps written in different languages. So different programming languages, different infra providers, it really doesn't matter. The Cloud Foundry abstraction in the form of Karifi is going to absorb all of those and provide a homogeneous, uniform developer experience. Now let's get into the actual demo itself. So I'm just going to quickly list some of the apps that are already running here. So we have apps written in Go and Node um, that are actually functional. And then we're going to deploy an app quickly. So I'm going to call this test app push. And then the path to the app is going to be a Go application that uses Go mod to manage dependencies. So what happens first is I'll walk you through the different steps as they happen here. And then we'll switch tracks back and forth between like the different pieces so that the architecture and the flow of how the app actually reaches the Kubernetes cluster becomes very clear. So the first stage is the source files are uploaded. So the upload happens to Cloud Foundry controllers that are running on the Kubernetes cluster. What we didn't have to specify is what language the app is in or what are the files that are there and things like that. Cloud Foundry is capable of detecting what the language is and what will happen here is it will upload the container to a local registry that's running. Again, this is the inner loop development that we're talking about. And then once it has been built, it will pull the container from there and trigger the run workflow. So what is enabling a, la uh, a part of this detection and the container build are packet of build packs that we are using internally with Curifi. Chris, you want to walk us through Paketo and what it is capable of? Sure. Um, yeah. So Paketo build packs, well, a, a high level for folks unfamiliar with build packs, um, they, they're they uh, an abstraction that take application source code, and package that application with its dependencies into a container image. Uh, so it's it's a really powerful and convenient tool for uh, having to, <laughs> enabling you to avoid packaging up your own container images. Um, so no Docker files needed um, and they're language agnostic, so they'll, they'll know if you need Go or Node or Ruby or Java or whatever whatever languages you might be working in, whatever frameworks. Um, they're a really powerful tool, and there are a lot of what's happening behind the scenes here with the deployment. Um, one thing to point out, too, um, you see they're generating SBOM for layers to get a build pack. Um, so SBOMs are a software bill of materials. Um, which is an increasingly important part of open source security, uh, which has become you know a, a really hot topic in, in recent years. Um, and Paketo automatically generates uh, software bills and materials, which is a really nice feature. Um, so in, in addition to being extremely convenient, um, there's a there's a built-in security uh, benefit there as well. Um, and yeah, so Paketo, uh, a separate project, works not just with Karifi, but also with um, with uh, other Kubernetes uh, platforms, but um, really powerful and something to take note of. So another thing to point out is that Paketo build packs are very modular. They 
are capable of generating layers much like a docker container would but it's significantly different because there's a lot more powerful caching built in there's a lot of reuse that is actually programmed into the paketo experience and one of the big features like we pointed out is its ability to execute the start commands the build commands and all of these other things through an auto detect process so you don't necessarily have to specify anything paketo has a lot of defaults that it will use but then it's also capable of giving interfaces to developers where they can put in their plugs and do a lot of granular customization in order to execute any custom builds that they need or if they want to change the start command for example they can do that if they want to add a few layers that pertain to very specific oss that might not be available in the default they have provisions for that as well and the other big thing is a lot of people are using microservices architecture these days so different services could be written in different languages paketo has the ability to create composite build packs and this is like a newer feature that is part of the cloud native build pack specification where composite build packs allow teams to configure microservices written in multiple languages so you can have a polyglot team basically and paketo is fully capable of serving the need for these teams where it takes these apps written in many different languages or frameworks and compiles them into containers that can then be run and the big part about the containers that are exported is they are all oci compatible so that is again built into the build pack specification itself and paketo can generate these it has really been growing in popularity um, this particular paketo project there's uh, there's a whole bunch of different uh, paas tools out there that are actually starting to adopt paketo and we're getting like a lot of mileage out of uh, this usage for example tilt which is like a local development tool makes use of paketo uh, hashicorp waypoint is another uh, paas that comes to mind fly.io is like a very recent uh, adopter of paketo I know that the VMware Tanzu build service is a big uh, user of Paketo as well. So it's seeing a lot of traction. Um, there's a lot of convenient developer experience mileage to be gained out of uh, Paketo usage, and we're seeing the community around it grow, uh, be very active, and because it's open source again, owned by the Cloud Foundry Foundation, it uh, it is definitely very encouraging to see the trajectory of the project and watch it grow and watch adoption and things like that so the build has actually been completed now we're waiting for uh, the app the containers to start so cloud foundry completes like the build and then starts the containers and then returns this url so this url is going to be um, what we make use of to you know hit a browser and check the app so as you can see uh, this go app is now running on a local client kind cluster and it's been pushed through corifi so all we needed to do was supply the source code and then it actually got converted into a container and it got deployed to like kubernetes so not um, one small step but more of like a giant leap <laughs> so we're going to repeat the same experience on a remote kubernetes cluster now so i am going to switch tracks by using another config file and then we're going to repeat the same process of like logging in and setting up the api endpoint and things like that so cloud foundry has this notion of creating api endpoints where you can create what is known as a target so 
I'm going to log into this remote cluster as the admin and then I'm going to quickly create an org here. Make use of that org. And then I'm going to create a space within this org. And then I'm going to have the CF client target this org and this space. Again, this is to demonstrate the notion of multi-tenancy within Cloud Foundry. And I'm going to push like a another app now, one that's built in Node. And this is going to demonstrate how irrespective of the language um, or framework that is in use, the CF push experience remains the exact same. So the CF push command, give the app a name and give it a path to the source code. You'll notice that the steps that it goes through are exactly the same, but obviously there's also going to be a delta where the build packs that are detected and used are going to be different, obviously because of like the difference in the language. The container registry is going to like a different um, container registry here. So we used a local registry then we're using a Docker Hub registry now. The same sort of setup can be used and you could use a GCR if you wanted to, like a Google container registry or an Azure container registry. GitHub container registries are getting a lot of popularity these days. So you can plug to those too. So if you look here, the build packs that are participating now are all Node.js based. Um, this is because CF actually detected that the app that we uploaded was uh, a JavaScript one. So it will then complete all of the configuration and create the same kind of S bombs. Um, so if folks are interested in the, in a description of what the format is for the S bombs, so we make use of Cyclone DX and the same, you know, set of steps go through. And now we have like a, URL, this is now operating from like the remote instance. The experience was exactly the same. Uh, it was probably a lot faster on the remote instance, uh, but essentially what we're trying to showcase here is we're able to preserve the developer experience of a single command deploy to Kubernetes, which you know eliminates a lot of the complexities typically associated with this process. So no Docker files, no complex YAMLs, uh, simple straightforward push and you're you're getting a URL back. So that sort of concludes the demo that we had to show. Thank you very much for having us, Swapo. Um, it's been great to be here. We're, as you can tell, we're very excited about both Karifi and the Keter Build Packs. Um, looking forward to seeing you in Detroit at KubeCon and for anyone else watching who might be coming to KubeCon or joining virtually, um, looking forward to seeing you there.